Greetings and welcome to another Firestormer Gaming video on Stationeers. Today we're going to be showing you how to heat up this room using the furnace gases. So we just open it up and equal things through. What you see I have an insulated tank inside that's connected to all the wiring that you you'll see up there shortly and it's connected so I can see the temperature of the room and the temperature of here. Now because this has no gases in it will not give a temperature um, an accurate temperature reading. All this is insulated and is connected to the exhaust of the furnace via a volume pump and what will happen is because this valve is closed it will stay insulated and in in at the exact temperature coming out of the furnace. These radiators connected to uninsulated pipe will be connected to the room and be trying to balance it up but they're not connected yet. So let's start that process you can actually burn some, or make some steel out of this if you wanted to, but I'm just going to do it for purposes of heating this room up. Four of each. Got a nice strong temperature there. Turn the volume pump on, and you'll see that rapidly increase. As soon as it decreases, go and turn the volume pump off. And that is now the temperature that we will have to work with close the door. Now as soon as I turn that valve you'll see the changes in temperature. Whilst that's uh, getting to a temperature that we want, in here we have a wall cooling unit and a wall heating unit and the sensor. That sensor is connected obviously to here so we can see the temperature in the room. So when this is got to a temperature that we want, it can fluctuate, especially if you have plants growing and different bits and pieces. So we need to make sure that uh, we've got an automated system that will come on when it needs to be he heated or cooled. So let's wait for that to get to the right temperature. And that should do us. That will stabilise shortly. There we go. So around 26 is about right for um, growing plants uh, or just having your your base temperature. So let's go and look at the setup to make this uh, automatic system so we keep that temperature in here without having to do anything. You see the temperature out here is minus 139 and it's sweet inside at just over 26. So this is the system. It looks complicated but uh, it's not once you get it once you get into it. Now you see the two different uh, heights here. This is the inner ceiling. This has an inner ceiling and an outer ceiling. It needs an outer ceiling to attach all of this circuitry. These are attached inside, so we don't need that. So the cooling system, this needs to be full of gas in order to work. So let's turn that on. You see it's not nothing in there at the moment. So we'll go and get some in a minute. And that's connected. That's how we're going to put uh, the coolant into here. So let's go and get that. So on my filtration system, the pollutant 
side we have a pressure regulator set at 8000 kPa you can use your labeler to put the value in rather than have to use the wheel so if we get our tank see it's just over 8000 kPa let's take it back let's So let's put it in and now you'll see the radiators and the pipework doing its job. So now we'll have a, a nice cool liquid or gas uh, in there to be able to cool the system if we need to. This is obviously the heater and the light. Now you'll see that this is heavy cable if you're dealing with a heater it will draw a lot of power so I would advise having your whole system on a heavy coil. So let's go through it. We have a logic reader which will stay as a logic reader. We have a compare unit which we will label upper. We have another compare unit, which we will call lower. And then a batch writer, which we will label heater. Confirm. And then this one, cooler. Confirm. And these will need to be labelled, we'll have that as the upper temperature and the lower. And that should be all the labelling we need to do. In order to label, or, or make the adjustments I should say, we're going to need the screwdriver. Now just a word on the wiring. Each one of these has a certain amount of ports. This has three, this has four, four, three, three, and these have two each. Now for, each, for this to function properly, the wiring must be such that anything on here can be read following the wires, not through something, but direct link so there you can see it can go anywhere it likes and connect to anything it needs to that's how you do the wiring there's nothing special about it just wire it all up so let's start with a logic reader the logic reader is going to need to read just scroll through it the gas sensor and it's going to be reading off of that the temperature Okay, so the logic compare upper, it needs to read the logic reader to know what the temperature is now. Because it's the upper, we're looking for the upper memory, logic memory. And if it's the upper limit, anything greater than that, we need to do something. So it's greater. The upper compare lower, again needs to read the logic reader to see what the temperature is. It needs the lower memory, and if it's lower than that, i.e. less, then we're asking it to, to do something. So that's less. So let's go on to the heater. Now the heater needs to come on when it's a low temperature, so it's compare lower and we're asking it to turn the heaters on and on. Now they're cooler we need to cool it down if it reaches the upper temperature so they compare upper and we need to turn the water cooler on or the wall cooler on. So the temperature, the upper temperature this gives you 100 values, this gives 10, 
press shift and it will give you one but we just need nice simple figures 300 for that for the upper and for the lower take it to the 300 and then come down by four so that should all be programmed up so we turn it on on, on. so that should all work we have green lights across the board we have good coolant in there so let's go and see what's going on inside close the door so our temperature is at 26.2 and you see that's within the range so nothing's going to happen so what I'll do is I will increase the temperature slightly and you can see the cooler comes on and that will keep going till it gets back within the desired range again and there we go so let's test this out uh, if it gets too cold in here and the heater comes on now I leave this in here so that if unfortunately I leave this door open and it gets really cold again we can get some rapid heat into the room the heater can heat the room but it's quite slow but it's sufficient for normal use so let's just open this door and then close it and you can see the heater has now come on let's give it a bit of a hand Now if you want uh, more rapid changes in temperature or you have bigger rooms etc then obviously you can just connect more heaters and more coolers. The coolers obviously need to be connected to uh, a pipework system. The heaters obviously don't. So what you should see is when it reaches the desired temperature, there we go, it all switches off. So that's how to keep your rooms at exactly the temperature you require. Any questions please leave in the comments below. Uh, I'm more than happy to answer them, on usually on a daily basis. But this has been Fast Armor Gaming with another tutorial. Hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe if you would, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.